It's a privilege to be uh, able to share today. Let me just describe this real quick. So I'm Phil, my wife is Iris or Alba, and uh, and our daughter is Tiffany, um, and she got married to this guy uh, <laughs> on the bench with her, George, and so her last name is Del Fierro. Oh, mm. nice. So Iris and I have been married. It's going to be 42 years soon. Wow. Um, and Tiffany's been a disciple. Since um, 2013. 2013 is a picture of her just after she got baptized. Um, I, I believe I baptized her husband, George, first, and then he baptized her, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. and, and, and uh, George and Tiffany on the bench there with their three sons. Uh, they're our pride and joy. <laughs> so they are awesome. And uh, yeah, so we'd like to just share... Um, uh, Tiffany's going to share first her experience of being uh, raised in the church and becoming a Christian. Um, and Iris and Iris and I would like to share Iris first, just about our own experience parenting uh, in the church. And um, hopefully, um, this can be relatable to you all in Jersey. And we love you. And um, we'll start. Hey everyone. Um... So like my dad said, my name is Tiffany Del Fierro, previously Zayas. I grew up uh, as a kingdom kid uh, in Queens first, Queens, New York, and then until I was about seven years old, and then we moved to Rockland County. Um, so I might know some of you because we were in North Jersey for a little bit in that ministry, and then um, went back to Rockland. So I'm going to share a little bit about how it was for me growing up as a kingdom kid. Um, and then share my story about how I came back um, to God as an adult. And so while young, um, church was really fun to me. I mean, I, I enjoyed all the midweek classes, Sunday service classes, um, the music, the songs, the performances we would put on, hope. Um, I just really had a great time. Um, as I became a preteen and a teen, I really formed some of my best friendships. Um, we had a really large preteen and teen ministry in Rockland County. Um, there were a lot of events and activities. There was also a lot of teen workers um, and I got really close to them in Rockland. So, you know, they would come over after school, we would go and get ice cream, we would go, we would talk, we would um, be at each other's houses, me and other teens and preteens. Um, we would watch movies. And then, you know, as a teen, I remember seeing a lot of my friends studying the Bible. Um, and so I would dabble in it a little bit. <laughs> I would study here and there. Um, you know, I, a part of me wanted to fit in. Um, and a part of me was a rule follower, right? So I was very much like, okay, this is what is, this is my next step in life. I'm a teenager now. You study the Bible. Um, and so there was a lot of, you know, internal pressure for me uh, to want to fit in with others, but then also to please my parents and also to please, you know, all the people who, who have known me and have seen me grow, grow up in the church and kind of saw me as the, a good kid. <laughs> and I wanted to kind of push, continue to push that narrative of who I was. And I was the one who was going to do things right and be a good, a good kid. Um, so I, um, I was going through the studies each week, um, but then eventually they kind of brought in the, the big guns. <laughs> they brought in Stacy Fridley, and a lot of you know Stacy. Um, <laughs> and so I must have been about 15 years old, but the study really stood out to me because it felt like a turning point for me. Uh, she really challenged me to fight for my own relationship with God uh, based on my own convictions. And um, I realized that I just wasn't studying for the right reasons, um, that I was really doing it for other people and not for myself. And this was around the same time that the church was going through, you know, whatever it was going through in the early 2000s, um, but it was a difficult time for a lot of people. And, um, and I think that it had an impact on me because I saw a lot of, you know, anger, hostility, pride, um, sadness. I saw just a lot of um, these feelings from leaders, but also members in the church. And I remember just watching it. Um, mm -hmm. 
and and just feeling like my fairy tale of like what church was was kind of mm. broken you know like i i saw people and their sin and for what it was and i it made me question a lot of things so mm-hmm. um you know a lot of my friends started moving away uh from new york they, a lot of people went down south uh families i spent years with moved or left the church some of my team workers left the church which felt like you know devastating because it was Mm. like you've been teaching me for all these years and then you left and so I felt kind of like is this fake is everything I've seen is that is has that been real you know Mm. um so you know around 15 16 I started there's the the kids in the team ministry that are anti-church, right? We all have whatever <laughs> ministry. They sit in the back, they make fun of everyone, they throw on their phones, or they don't really care to be there and have a bad attitude. So that was me at this point. Um, and that was me with a few teens that you would have known, uh, Chelsea Kennard and Lauren <laughs> McCullough now. So that was us. We were, um, we would at team camp make songs about how much, cause we were in a band also. So we'd make songs about how much we hated church, um, and would perform them in our cabin. So, you know, that's where we were at. And, um, that would fight my parents a little more to come with them to church, um, or go to team camp. I felt just uncertain about whether God was even real. Um, and then in high school, I started dating a guy, uh, George, who's now my husband, actually. So uh, it worked out, but, but you know. Um, so I went away to college. Um, I felt like I wanted to experience the world a little bit. I felt like I was deprived of what the world was offering me. Um, and I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to know what I was missing, really. So I went to college and I partied hard. I, I drank a lot. Uh, went to the bars a lot, smoked weed, went back and forth to my boyfriend's college. Um, and so that was, you know, four years of my life was that kind of pattern repetitively. And then um, I graduated college. And then what comes after that? I don't have a job lined up yet. I'm going to go to graduate school. I got into NYU uh, in New York City. And so I needed to move back home. <laughs> and so my life kind of took a big turn. I had to live back with my parents and commute to the city. Um, and I kind of started to feel like, I started questioning life at that point. Um, I wanted to, I, I seeked truth really. And I, I wanted to know what was life about? Like what, what um, is this all the world has to offer me? Is it just gonna be a chase of another good time? another bar, more weekend plans? Um, Is this just going to be my life for years to come? And so since I was at my parents' house again, um, they were always hospitable. So there was always disciples over. Um, I found it annoying because I kind of wanted our house, you know, I didn't want to keep seeing people from church over and over. It was a reminder to me really that I was not living my life uh according to you know god's plan for me and so um you know at this point lauren and chelsea lauren mccullough chelsea novak now um would invite me to dinners and breakfasts um they were disciples at this point um and you know i did maintain those friendships so i would still hang out with them i would still go and eat you know meals with them um a part of me was a little cynical and was very much like are they just wanting to meet with me to kind of like trap me to get me back to church to you know ask me all these questions about my life um but no they were very genuine and you know they they loved me where I was at and so I I got married soon after um I graduated um graduate school and then I started a job um I began continuing to ask myself questions about God while commuting I wondered if, you know, if I died, I would cross the Tappan Zee Bridge and I was like, you know, it was shaking. <laughs> and I started thinking, you know, what if I died today? What, um, what would God say to me? Is there a God? Um, I felt that I needed to just investigate this more on my own. And so I would get to work early. I'd get to work like an hour early. I brought a Bible um, in the car. I would leave it in my glove compartment. And then I would read for an hour before work each day. Um, 
So I began getting excited about what I was reading. It was like the first time I was reading the Bible um, because I was reading with a new lens and a different heart um, with an open heart really. And so I, I kept my reading a secret because I didn't want any of the external pressures on me. I didn't want my parents to get it too excited. You know, I didn't want to get anybody's hopes up. I didn't want, I just didn't want to feel uh, any outside pressure. And so soon after Lauren McCullough invited me to, um, to dinner. And so while we were eating, she mentioned, you know, we're starting a new Bible talk for some of the young couples at church. Um, and they lived in Rockland now, they moved from the city. And so she said, you know, if, if you and George ever want to come and check it out, you're more than welcome. And so, you know, I revealed to her that actually I've been studying the Bible lately and it might be something I'm interested in. Let me talk to George and see if he would come with me. And so George said he would come, but he also added, you know, just know, you know, as long they know that they're not going to change me, nothing's going to come from this. I'll go with you, but you know, like nothing's going to happen. And then um, soon after we both started studying <laughs> and we both got baptized um, March 17, 2013. And I felt very grateful just for the love and patience of God, first of all, but also my parents um, and my friends, uh, the friendships that I maintained through church. Um, and, you know, like Stacy Fridley said in my teens Bible study, um, that I need to have my own convictions about God. And that's what I, that's what I did, right? Because only then was I able to develop um, mm -hmm. a faith that was long lasting and unwavering. Mm -hmm. So that's really my, that's Amen. my uh, story. I let my mom. That's go. great. Yeah. Amen. That was, that's awesome. Um, okay. I appreciate everything uh, Tiffany shared. We've heard her story before. And it's amazing how God works in our lives. Um, I'm definitely grateful that um, to be able to share with you all about. To be able to share with you. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm grateful that we, you know, I'm able to uh, share with you all. Um, I remember one thing that I that helps me is remembering that God is in control. You know, in Proverbs 22, 6, in the, on the TPT version, it says, dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go. And, they, and the values they've learned from you will be with them for life. And that scripture really always stood out to me because it doesn't say anything about the child being young or anything to that effect, but that we, our, our responsibility is to teach them in the way they should go. Um, and that you know, later on in life, they're going to follow the, the lead. And I remember, you know, trying to really, I realized that I wasn't trusting God with my children. I felt I needed to control every aspect of their lives. I, I, you know, I felt that with my older daughter, I felt like I exasperated her rather than allow her to be free and experience life for herself as you know, Tiffany shared that she had to figure it out for herself. I feared that some of the things that I had done as a, as a teen, that she would do, and I didn't want that for her. Um, I wanted to protect, protect them. And so I kept on interfering with God's plans in their life. Uh, every time uh, our children would get curious about the world, it made Phil and I go into lockdown. You know, I mean, I remember times where we would change the security code in our house just in case our daughter decided to sneak out and we would hide our car keys underneath our mattress just so she couldn't get a hold of our keys. And it was it was just crazy. It was so stressful during those times with us. And, you know, when I think back at it, I think, boy, instead of giving her the environment that we should have given her the environment where they could come to us and share with us the experiences of the world that they could you know when they made mistakes when they had disappointments that they could come and feel safe talking to us about it but I made it we made it so um so uncomfortable for them to be able to talk to us we lost that opportunity then 
um, even with with what they were experiencing, they didn't feel the love. They didn't feel the unconditional, uh, you know, love that God gives us. God never controlled that. You know, Jesus doesn't control us. He gives us a free choice. And why would we feel that it's okay for us to control our children? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I, I learned a lot about that about myself and my controlling uh, nature. And it was the fear that was within me, my fear of things happening to them, getting pregnant, doing drugs, doing all the things that I thought, you know, God forbid something happens. But when I look back at, you know, my childhood, I became a Christian at 29. I had done things that my daughters have never even come close to. And I was so paranoid, you know? And God sought me out through it all. And I didn't have a Christian background. I didn't, my parents allowed me to go to church to do my, you know, the, the Catholic, uh, whatever, you know, communion, you know, confirmation. I still don't know what I did back then, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so I did those things, but I was never required to live a life of a disciple or to live, you know, caring about others. I just did what I had to do. Um, and it, it didn't, you know, God chose me. He, he, see, he sorted me out at 29 and I thank God for, for the opportunity that he gave me, you know? So why wouldn't he take care of my daughters? Why did I feel like I had to control the situation? Mm -hmm. The other thing that, that was a reminder to me is that roller coaster. Every time my children were doing well, then I was doing well. If they were doing bad, then I was doing bad. And you could see it, my whole personality would change. I would get depressed, I would feel sad. What are people gonna think about us? Are people gonna ever come to us and ask input? Because how could they come to us? What do we have to offer them? Um, and then I realized, wow, my I'm thinking about the wrong things. I'm not, you know, I, I'm here trying to do the right thing by my kids. And I'm worried about what people think. That's something's wrong with this kind of thinking. Um, we were all during that time, there weren't many teens around at the church during that time. We were all in the same boat. We were all trying to learn how to raise teens in the church. Um, I was, you know, again, my lack of trust in the Lord and um, Instead of me drawing closer and closer to God during that time and allowing my daughters to experience life and, and making it a safe place for them to come to, I didn't do that. You know, I realized that with, with Tiffany, I knew, I knew that I wanted to let, I wanted to let go of the control. I wanted to trust God with her. Um, and I start, you know, I continue to follow my convictions, what I believe, you know. Um, studying the Bible with women, um, having, you know, hosting things at my house, having people fellowship, um, not worried about what people were thinking or saying and worried about how she was going to react or my other daughter was going to react, whether they're going to give my friends an attitude or, you know, you never knew at that time. So the truth is I have two awesome daughters. They're both different, but they're both amazing women they're kind they're loving they're um they're strong women and you know i still have faith that my older daughter will become a christian but i feel confident i still feel confident that she will one day come to her own convictions about her relationship i just have to feel show her jesus he showed me mercy he showed me grace he showed me forgiveness and I have to do the same for her and for each other. Great. Thank you so much for letting me share. I hope that helps. <laughs> Thanks. Huh? Um, so my two cents is, um, you know, <laughs> I was baptized uh, um, three days before Tiffany was born. And um, so she was truly a, a kingdom kid, um, you know, every day of her life. And even, um, I mean, her older, her older sister um, had just turned five years old 
and Iris was studying while she was nine months pregnant. So Tiffany was even hearing it while Iris was pregnant. Um, so as Tiffany was sharing, I mean, I, I really started to uh, get teary eyed because, you know, it was our daily prayer that our daughters would become Christians. And I imagine all of us must pray that for our kids. Mm -hmm. And we would do anything to help them. We would uh, go out of our way. We would sacrifice. Um, and when you pray that prayer every day, um, you know, when we show the picture of Tiffany getting baptized, I honestly, I, I couldn't even talk <laughs> to do, you know, to ask the questions and to get even uh, them in the water is like, uh, I was so emotional because, it, you know, praying, praying that prayer and then seeing it realized after all, after 30, you know, 20 something years at the, at, for her, um, you know, and so you're willing to do whatever it takes for your kids, right? So when we moved our ministry to Jersey, we would drive in our kids to the Jersey functions, um, sometimes two or three times a day. And, uh, but we wanted to do whatever it took. Um, and quite honestly, at the time, we thought Tiffany was a shoe in Like, you know, she was almost going to be like naturally a Christian, <laughs> just the way she was, her personality, um, only to realize that no one is a shoe in right? And, uh, you know, all, all of our children will sin and all of them need to repent. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes we raise our kids like we, we want them to be little disciples and we expect them to hold to the word uh, as disciples and as, as if uh, they're uh, little Christians when that's unreasonable. Um, they're not going to be disciples unless they have a relationship with Jesus. And, um, but it's confusing as a parent sometimes. You just, you, you don't want your kids to suffer consequences for their sins either. And as Iris shared, you know, sometimes we want to protect them from the sinful world. And but you can't control them either because that only backfires and they resent it and they they feel stifled. And uh, um, so we have to somehow, uh, as even Russ talked about earlier, just love our kids and raise them to, to love God, to appreciate God in the church, but just continue to love them. And they need to know that you love them even more than anything, um, uh, you know, Tiff's older sister uh, was, was responsive. When we first moved our ministry to Jersey in 1995, she was pretty responsive. There was a lot of um, uh, teen friends that she had there. And, um, and she was eventually baptized as a teenager. Um, and then she later struggled. Um, and, um, and then a few years later, uh, uh, pursued God again. She got restored. Um, but just before she was going off to college, she got restored. So she went off to college. But then near the end of her first year, she left the fellowship. Um, and of course, that was devastating for us. But and we continue to pray for her. And of course, we always try to represent, um, you know, uh, our faith to her. But, you know, we also allow her to be herself. And it just encourage her and love her along the way. Um, and of course, we were very, very encouraged when Tiffany started to pursue God and find out that she was reading the Bible on her own and that, um, and even that her husband, George, um, pursued God. And uh, um, I mean, that was a, that was a uh, really an emotional day for me that March 17th, uh, nine years ago. And Iris, and as Iris shared, you know, these lessons that we learned um, uh, caused us and our daughter, uh, uh, our older daughter, and also Tiffany to some extent, you know, pain. And um, uh, I wish I could, I wish I could do a do-over, um, honestly. Um, but at the same time, I have faith and trust that God, you know, God can make anything redeemable. So even our mistakes, God can work through them. Uh, uh, we, you know, we've of course talked to ja uh, Jasmine as our older daughter, so we apologize to her. And we've talked to her. We've, um, you know, had conversations with her. 
And, you know, as Tiffany shared, you know, she has to come to her own convictions and she'll hopefully have that day where she pursues the Lord. So um, I just wanted to close with just a couple of quick points on what I feel are the most important um, responsibilities of a parent or, or uh, areas, key areas that we as parents should be uh, trying to pursue. And um, the first one, I think Iris already touched on it, is trust the Lord. Um, only God can change our kids' life and their heart. We can't change their heart. Um, and God will always do it in his time. Mm -hmm. um, we can't force it. We can't control it. We can't manipulate it. Um, our, our kids have to have their own relationship with God and God is working on them like he worked on us. So that's the most important. Um, secondly, um, we as parents have to be consistent in our faith and as a disciple. And even if we're making mistakes, I mean, if we make mistakes, we apologize, we repent, uh, we show that we can change and we humble ourselves. Um, but our, need, our, our children need to see Jesus in us. Um, they're really, the, this, this is their connection, their first connection to, to God and, and, um, and Jesus. So our kids need to see that. And um, if they see conflicting uh, messages, if we're being hypocritical, if we're different at church than we are at home, uh, if we're different at work than we are at home or at church, kids are not dumb. They pick that up immediately. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost instinctive. And they will know when we're not genuine and real. And, um, and I think finally, um, we have to build a trust with our son or daughter. Um, you know, Colossians 3, 21 says, fathers do not embitter your children. You know, I realized that early that I need to have a connection with my daughters. Uh, so I would take them out to, to breakfast. I would do different things. Even when they were little, I would play Barbie with them. And uh, that was strange for me, but, <laughs> you know, I, I played Barbie. And uh, <laughs> we, we did different things and we had to build a friendship. Um, and I know with my older daughter, that did start a little late for me um, uh, as a preteen. Um, so, uh, and, and, you know, we have to be honest with our kids. And I, I know Tiffany always wanted, wanted our trust. Uh, she, so we were always at a point where if Tiffany was doing something that she knows she shouldn't, it was almost like she couldn't hold it in. Eventually she would share it with us until she got older and then really rebellious. But then, um, you know, it's so important for us to have a friendship, a connection with our kids um, because they need, they need to be able to talk to us about anything. Um, and, uh, you know, we would have family devotionals and uh, the kids love that, you know, uh, around a fire or just, um, they would look forward to, you know, a theme that we would just do together. Um, and, you know, I, I loved actually even just taking these long car rides with them because without having anything scripted, you know, as far as an agenda, just sometimes they would just talk on the car ride, you know, and we would have, you know, half an hour, hour rides into Jersey because of where our ministry was, but um, it gave them a, an opportunity to talk. And we wouldn't force the conversation. We would just, you know, and somehow it would come out and we would be able to, to, to pull the strings and continue to ask them questions. So um, parenting is uh, quite an experience uh, for both the children and for us. Um, uh, we've been blessed with uh, Tiffany as, um, as our daughter uh, and even more so when, uh, when she gave her life to God. Um, we're fortunate too, we, we, uh, she lives in the, in the house right behind us. Um, with our three grandsons so we get to see them like all the time and um and her and george are raising their kids to love god and to uh to do uh and to love them and to do and to focus god on god uh, as um and hopefully and prayerfully we pray for them all the time now. Yeah. so 
<laughs> the next generation is coming. So we're, we're praying for them to become Christians. Thank you.